Hi. Hey, Justin. <laughs> hey, all right. So we are live. Uh, I'm hoping there are a bunch of people watching uh, because this is going to be super, super fun. It's also going to be super short because I know you got some work to do. Uh, cool. You're running a campaign and your life. And oh, my God. Okay, so um, everybody, uh, my name is Justin Giddings. I am the Kickstarter guy, and this video is uh, an interview with Jane Wagner, one of my clients who is just kicking butt right now. Um, trying. <laughs> and this is part of a series I'm doing of 30 training videos in 30 days. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to YouTube and look up the Kickstarter guy, or you can go to Facebook, uh, actually hackingkickstarter.com. We'll take you to my Facebook group where there's a bunch of free training. Do it. Uh, but enough about me. Let's talk about your campaign. So you are running a document. You know what? I don't know why I'm introducing your project. Please go ahead. Cool. So Break the Game is a documentary about the legendary video game speedrunner Narcissa Wright. Um, she became pretty famous back in 2014 for beating Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time in 18 minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah, that's right. What? Uh, yep. <laughs> real, real fast. Uh, you should check out the video. I highly recommend that's it. Incredible. Um, but basically, our movie follows her um, after she transitions from male to female, comes out, loses a bunch of her following, and tries to make this comeback with the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. So it's really a film about community, identity, and finding love and connection in today's digital world. I'm so excited about this doc. I mean, you literally are like combining the elements of, you know, the game space, which is obviously like huge and, yeah. you know, topical social justice issues, um, uh, you know, crazy like Olympic level. Uh, I mean, there are speed running tournaments. I've, I've seen this. Like once you introduce this to me, I got on YouTube and went nuts. And as you know, there's like speed running tournaments that are like, you know, huge cash prizes and thousands of people watching. And she was like the queen of this. She was considered the face of speed running and um, pretty much like the most influential or important speed runners or one of them. Um, she had this really legendary um, speed run of Ocarina of Time in 2013 that probably single handedly got more people invested in the hobby than any other speed run. Um, like you can kind of just tell looking at those old videos that she was like the Michael Jordan of, yeah. of this like really cool subculture. Wow. That's amazing. Um, and qu quickly, cause I had somebody ask me this earlier, uh, speed running, like, do you have like a one sentence definition of that? Totally. Uh, speed running is basically when you try to beat a game as fast as possible, oftentimes through any, means necessary so using exploits and glitches kind of reverse engineering the game and kind of hacking into the looking into the code um so it's it's sort of like a sport but it's also kind of like an art and a performance as well like the best speed runs are almost like the showcase of like many years of community um community time kind of going into breaking these games apart yeah, that I found that to be really interesting too. Was was that like you watch somebody else's speed run, they figured out some glitch, then you incorporate that, and then you figure out the next glitch, and then like it gets to a point where the community, you're kind of standing on the shoulders of the community, and then the top speed runners are able to take that and just you know to that next level. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate, and that's like really happening right now um, in the Breath of the Wild community, which that game is. Like, literally, there are new glitches found yesterday, and the game has been completely broken apart. So now all the speedrunners are going back, and they're rerouting and finding their new new paths to the end of the game. Um, and they're all kind of, like, working together to make it happen. It's real, It's cool. That's amazing. All right, so let's talk about your campaign. Uh, before mm -hmm. I get into it, everyone watching this, a great way to say, if you get anything out of this video, frankly, a great way to say thank you is to go to Jane's campaign and support it share her project, support the campaign uh, with a financial contribution. You can do that by going to breakthegamemovie.com. Breakthegamemovie.com. Um, can I add a little something about sure. um, donations made before 11.59 p.m. tonight will get you in the running 
for a custom N64, custom controller, Ocarina of Time cartridge signed by Narcissa Wright, Master Sword pin, and a grab bag of games. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so everybody watching this, like, go right now. Uh, uh, that's incredible. Okay, so that actually kind of perfect segue then into uh, sort of the Kickstarter crowdfunding pieces of this, right? So um, one thing that I noticed early on, even in our process together, was your affinity for uh, pixel art in particular. Mm -hmm. But taking, in general, taking the time to find art that inspired you pay for that art oftentimes uh pretty good deals though on like fiverr and whatnot but like actually purchase that art and what i noticed was that by being inspired and passionate about that it helped it helped you find your own voice and passion through the campaign because you were kind of nervous about being the face of something when we first got together yeah talk about that a little bit yeah totally um kind of through the whole campaign, I wanted it to be like, I don't want to half-ass it. I want it to be really amazing and beautiful. And also to kind of convey the tone of the film Mm -hmm. um, in a way that a production still or a series of stills just in my mind, they can't quite capture the feel of a film, especially when it's a movie about the digital world. So just seeing someone at the computer just doesn't really do it. Um, and it's a big part of why we're raising money is to try to make Narcissus virtual world as cinematic as possible. So I spent a lot of time researching some of my, my favorite artists, um, who also kind of work in kind of the video game type aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of artists work on Twitter, uh, or they, they publish their work on Twitter and share it. So I kind of had an idea of what I was looking for there. Um, and then I also kind of discovered that on Fiverr, there are a ton of like really talented pixel artists um, who work for fairly reasonable prices and can just create amazing, amazing imagery. Ooh. Seriously, everybody watching this, go to the campaign site to look at the art, frankly. Like, I mean, you know, contribute and all that stuff, too. But like this stuff is is such a high quality, su- such high quality art and uh, I remember you telling me some of the prices on this and be, just kind of being blown away. And like what inspired me about that too was by having quality, like film is a visual medium. Yeah. Period, right. A picture speaks a thousand words. And so many times when I see campaigns struggling, so here's a big takeaway for everybody. When I see campaigns struggling, one of the first things I notice is that their page is just this wall of text. It's just yeah. black and white wall of text maybe an image here or there, but it's kind of disjointed and maybe not even really connected. It's just, it's just like a, a word vomit. Right. Now, being able to articulate your vision through the written word is a valuable skill. And of course, part of crowdfunding, but for film at the end of the day, it's a visual medium picture speaks a thousand words. So every time you can put in a piece of artwork, a picture, a video, you know, if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video is worth a thousand pictures because literally yeah. four to 30 to 60 pictures per second. So every time that you can interject your process, your social media posts, your, your, uh, obviously your page design. Now they're allowing pictures and perks on like see the spark and stuff. Um, every time that you can kind of integrate that visual medium, it speaks to your aesthetic and I, and thus voice as a filmmaker that the written word just doesn't do the same thing. It just, it just doesn't do it. And what I love about it is you took that even further and you thought, okay, I've got plenty of footage from the documentary and I totally. can put that footage and it would be appropriate. And, I, and you've got some footage in there. You've got a great trailer on there as well, which I think mm-hmm. you can watch. I think it's a great example. Um, but by actually finding that tonal stuff, that like emotionally jazzing stuff and, and posting that, I think that's why you had such a great, first couple of weeks where you just came out of the, you know, came out of the gate. You're in the middle now, which is the, spot. yes, everybody's experience. You know, everybody experiences that. Um, I, I'm not worried about your campaign at all. Frankly. Yeah. Um, well, we've even used art in the mid, in the middle. Um, I think you might remember last weekend we had our matching campaign and we needed to get a hundred backers. And it was, I think Saturday and we still needed 40 people. 
and I, I wrote you, I was like, what do I do? It's Labor Day weekend. And you were like, it's, you failed basically. And I was like, no, I will not fail. Like, hey, we gotta, we gotta, re- we gotta revisit this. And you were, and you were like, no, we're not. <laughs> well, my mom um, is a painter and she had this really sweet misunderstanding about one of our rewards, which is that you can get your name, your name or your gamer tag included in the film as an Easter egg. Right. And she thought that meant your name would actually be on an egg in the film somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I sort of messed with her a little bit and I was like, can you help me with like some concept sketches? And she's like, are we talking 3D? Are we talking painting? I'm like, why don't you paint, paint some eggs? And she like got really into it and painted this egg painting for Narcissa. Um, so I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is adorable. Like, and she was really kind enough to volunteer to paint everyone who donated over the weekend to help us get to that goal, an Easter egg. And sure enough, we hit that goal with time to spare. Um, in one day. So you had the... In, in, yeah, a little over 24 hours. Over the Labor Day weekend. Over Labor Day weekend. Yeah. This is this is why I do these things. When I see a client discover this little nugget that I didn't even know, right? What was my reaction to the challenging week? Was like, man, you got 68 out of the 40, which is awesome. But I don't know how you're going to get that 40 in the last day or two. And it kind of... The stakes go away if it's just this never ending nebulous event. So I think we need to end the event. We'll figure out how to read it. But by, again, it all comes back to like that tone and that passion. And instead of just being like, we need your help in desperation, you got smart and you thought, okay, uh, my mom thinks Easter eggs, which for people who don't know in the gaming community, Easter eggs are like little hidden nuggets of awesomeness in, in creative media, movies and games and that kind of stuff. Um, totally. My mom thought it was like an actual Easter egg. And to take that and leverage that into, again, like an artistic piece that represents your tone, is thematically connected to your project, is kind of whimsical and fun, which breaks up even even you and all the rest of my clients who are kicking ass their social media. um, I don't want to say it's monotonous at all, but there's definitely like, you know, a challenge of finding something that's super fresh every day. So you found (laughs) something that's super fresh and boom, in, in one day... On the weekend, which is when, uh, just FYI people, weekends suck for crowdfunding, uh, at least for a lot of people, although you've had an interesting experience where most of your gamers are on their computers on the weekend. So that's true. These are best practices, not hard rules. But generally, crowd uh, weekends aren't great. So it's a it's a weekend day. It's Labor Day weekend where even if, you know, everybody's on vacation or doing whatever. And so to, like, marry those two, to have those two challenges in place for you to get 40 new backers in 24 hours by leveraging that art. That's the takeaway I wanted people to have was uh, that by channeling that passion, that creativity and a little bit of whimsy and a little bit of fun and a little bit personal and familiar and authentic and passionate, all that stuff we trained on, Mm -hmm. got to see it really come into play where mom's painting Easter eggs for your game audience and your gamers are like, that's so cute. That's such a cute mom thing, which is where she thinks Easter eggs are Easter eggs. Yeah, we even had like some of our the artists that like we actually commissioned um, to do the posters for our film. Mm-hmm. One of them even like was really like inspired, I think, by it and shared it on Twitter and even donated um, themselves uh, to the campaign. So it, it was just like pretty exciting to like exciting <laughs> uh, to kind of like, Video Bring everyone over. together like that. Video over. That pun was amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, cool. So uh, everybody watching, again, breakthegamemovie.com. It'll take you to the Kickstarter page. Um, go f- go for the art. Stay for the project, right? Contribute for the project. But seriously, look at how that page got laid out. It's going to be a great lesson in layout and page design. Um, look at how, uh, you know, you've got footage, but a lot of my clients come to me and they don't have anything yet. Right. That's why they're raising money is to go shoot the thing. And like, you know, this, again, this is a great way, like go find an artist that inspires you, whose style inspires you and use that as a way to, to represent that inner, like kind of tonal thing. Yeah, it's um, a really a great way to find your voice. Um, also it's just like a director. Um, and like, we're definitely needing an animation component to our film. And now that I've kind of, done these posters in various styles 
I have a better sense of what's going to actually work for the film itself. Right. That's the other thing about crowdfunding is it can be a testing ground for ideas and the way you present the film, right? So when the film's done, having gone through this process, you're going to kind of know, like, do I present this in that digital pixel art kind of way? Maybe I make a poster or logo kind of in that space. Or, you know, maybe that didn't really work out well in this hypothetical scenario. And so I'm going to go in this other direction. Like, it's not just the money. As I always say, it's the audience building. It's the marketing. It's the awareness. And you've just done a kick-ass job of it. Thanks. And that's why I wanted you to, you know, come on and talk about the problem. Yeah, thank you. Um, All right, sweet. We've got, I know you got to go in a few minutes. Can we maybe take a couple of questions if people have them? Yeah, of course. So anybody watching, uh, again, go to Break the Game Movie, right? Not the movie. Yeah. Break yeah, BreakTheGameMovie.com. Can I shout out some of our artists, actually? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I just wanted to shout out uh, Seer Stuff, who did the Narcissa wallpaper art. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the posters we have available. Um, they're also pretty well known amongst people who like Zelda for creating this really cool Zelda vending machine gif. Um, cool. you can check them out on Twitter, right. um, see your stuff there. It's actually see your light is the artist. See your stuff is their Twitter. Um, I want to E R am I here? S E E R S T U F F is their Twitter. Um, I want to shout out Juanila who d- did our animated pixel art gift. That's for all of our rewards. It's available for, for everyone really. Um, want to shout out legions who did the digital cockpit poster um little corvus who did the moon jump who kind of worked with my inspiration of this watchman poster to create this really unique um 80s inspired lush um painting and i also want to shout out amalis rosa who did what we've been using as our cover photo on facebook which is also available as a really oh, yeah. sick poster i think that's the that's the art i connected to this event right wasn't that the cover no that's another piece of art um by a fiber artist arve Yudi, um who based yeah who really kind of got that zelda feel um to what we're using on our kickstarter page it's the, it's the main image there yeah i it, it, it's fantastic um, all right. If anybody's watching this and you've got questions, we'll stay on for the next few uh, moments. Just put them in the comments below. Um, and if we see a question, we'll answer it. And if not, um, we'll let everybody go. Da, da, da. Here, let me pull up your name again. Let me pull up the website again. Um, yeah. Sometimes we get to this part of the video. and Yeah. Well, I, al- I also would say everyone should check out our Facebook and Twitter also tomorrow because something really big is happening tomorrow. Um, that's really going to um, excite especially the speedrunning fans. Um, I can't quite give it away, but yeah. it's, okay. re- it's real good. It's real good. Um, I'm putting it actually as a comment on Facebook so that uh, people remember. Gamemovie.com. Um, as a little tip, uh, too, because I've got you. Why not? Um, uh, put that event announcement on the Facebook page above the hook image so that when people come to the – sorry, not Facebook page, the, the crowdfunding page – um, above the hook image with maybe like a like a divider of some kind so that when people mm. come, the first impression is kind of what's new and what's happening and what's fresh, which can be really re- refreshing for, for new traffic um, and old traffic. Uh, and then you have like your, your hook image. Yeah. Like well, you can see kind of the, uh, the swag bundle that we have. We have like a little selection of images with the N64 and the controller and all of that kind of just just below the video of um right right. exactly exactly um okay i don't think we're getting any questions right now so everybody watching this um on i'm going to be putting this as a podcast episode Uh, i'm going to be putting this on youtube obviously it'll live here in the facebook group hacking kickstarter.com we'll take you there um but please 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 however you're consuming this video uh, leave uh, your thoughts comments and questions below whether it's for me in general about crowdfunding whether it's Jane specifically for any, you know, 
in connection to what she's doing, about the project, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we will answer them either through those comments or, like I said, I'm doing 30 days of 30 crowdfunding training videos. So it'll pop up somewhere else as well. Sweet. Uh, Jane, thank you again for hanging and talking. Of course. You can get back to your awesomeness. I've got a little post up that should direct some people there, uh, whether it's tonight to get that cool little event or tomorrow with this weekend's event um, and keep kicking ass. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Cool. Peace. See you later. Later. All right.